with the Alpha Niner Uniform India Romeo. Uniform India Romeo, what's the name there? The name here is Rick, Jim. I'm uh, near Indianapolis, Indiana. Roger, roger. And Rick, uh, what radio are you running? Sorry, Rick. Uh, try again. This is a homebrew radio. Oh, really? Uh, well, what do you call it, Sally or John? Or it hasn't got a name yet, but I don't know if you can help me. I built up a new audio board uh, this week. It's uh, old school analog, no menus, just uh, pop amp spot the bass. Roger that, uh, Rick. Uh, do you have an ALC meter in your radio? Do you have an ALC reference uh, meter in your radio? No, I have no ALC. I use a pair of eyeballs and an oscilloscope on the output. Okay, sir. Um, uh, but you have a limiter uh, in that radio, Roger? Uh, correct. I've got a uh, diode limiter at the last stage of my audio chain before I go into the balance modulator. Okay. Uh, usually, you know, we use the ALC as a, a little um, uh, a limiting effect to be able to arrive at our uh, 3 dB dynamic range. So I would suggest, uh, let's uh, check out how your diode uh, uh, limiter does there. Uh, just uh, bring up your audio, because right now you are very non-processed. Your dynamic range is about 10 dB, which means your average percent of peak modulation is somewhere around 30%. So we want to fatten that up a little bit if we, if we could, Roger. Okay, let's try that. That's what I've been uh, hoping to find is somebody that can give me some technical evaluation of how this thing sounds. Over. Roger, okay. Uh, so uh, the way we do that would be to uh, crank up your uh, mic uh, level and uh, see see how she do, how she goes. Roger. Okay, I've got a little bit of equalization on this thing. i got the uh, classic uh, back end old tone control. Uh, I took out the mid-range control that's running treble and bass. Treble is flat, is bass slightly amplified. I'm using a uh, compression chip on this, and according to the data sheet in my analysis, I'm running about a 3 to 1 compression, but I think my attack time is too slow to make that any, uh, any of any effect. Over. Roger, what's your current mic gain? Well, it's about half scale. I can run it up a little more, uh, give you a few more TV. There you go. All right, uh, and so you did what, uh, about, uh, what would you say, uh, 3 or 4 dB boost? Uh, that probably is. I have not calibrated this pot yet, so it's all kind of by eyeball. Okay. Uh, what would uh, probably be a good idea would be, and uh, I, I say this in preference to, uh, you know, uh, my normal pr setup procedure, I rely on that ALC uh, uh, to be able to fatten our signal up. And I'm really not sure about your diode as far as uh, the limiter. I, I know it's uh, like clip, but then that uh, generates a lot of uh, the harmonics in you know, distortion, so I, I don't want to push that. So l let me just say this. Um, maybe it might be a good idea to look around and see if you can find an outboard uh, limiter, you know, uh, an outboard limiter that will be able to uh, it will be able to fatten you up that way. Otherwise, you know, we're going to rely on those that diode uh, clipping to, to do that. So I think a, a real outboard limiter would be uh, maybe a, a way to go with more finesse, Roger. Okay, I could try that. The uh, the limiter I'm using now is not exactly a, a diode clipper. It's, uh, it's an op amp with diodes and a feedback loop that basically uh, reduced the gain uh, to basically a voltage follower as you uh, forward bias of diode, so it doesn't really clip, it kind of rounds off the waveform, and uh, I'm hopefully uh, avoiding distortion that way, but uh, I could look around some more. I was just curious from your uh, professional ear if there was anything obvious I was doing wrong at this point. Uh, just that uh, you could be a lot fatter. Now, wh why don't we just make an experiment? Uh, uh, why don't you come on up a little bit more with your uh, mic level there, and uh, let's see, w w you know, uh, if it how well it handles it, Roger. Okay, I'll boost the mic level up. I'm running, uh, wow, full peak on the amplifier output. 
uh, the limiter should keep me from going into saturation on the amp. But this is about as much as I ever push this thing. Over. Yeah, it sounds pretty good. I don't hear any obvious distortion. So, uh, you know, the thing I would do now, um, do you have uh, any equalization available? Yeah, I've got a treble and bass control. The uh, I've moved the treble control down in frequency, so it really comes into effect around one kilohertz. The, uh, the bass control, I get about a 3 dB boost at 400, and it goes up 6 dB per octave as I go down. Roger. Now, can you move that to uh, 2.6K, 2.5K center frequency? Uh, not without pulling out the soldering iron. <laughs> no, we don't want to do that. But uh, what about the top end? Uh, you have a, Is that a, a three-band EQ that you have outboard? Well, it's a three-band e uh, EQ with the middle band uh, absent. So it's just uh, low end and top end. The microphone is an old Shure 444 which is notorious for having a high-frequency peak in it. So I kind of thought that most of the effort would be to boost the bass. Over. Yeah, uh, we could try that. Uh, the thing is, do you, do you think that your, um, uh, your um, sorry, just a moment, uh, let me look at something. Okay, I've got a little latency. I'm looking at my, my audio, my audio, in a, uh, a monitor that is uh, video actually and it's it's got about a four second latency I, I'm not sure why I hope in the end the audio and the video are together usually they are but I never realized the latency was just that that much anyway n enough of my uh, problems uh, what I was thinking of is uh, do you think that uh, your that th the whole thing about an equalizer you know I've, I've said this before is the uh, mid-range uh, is there to be um, usually uh, flat and the whole idea behind an equalizer is uh, uh, top end balance to mid range and the bottom end balance to mid range. And if you if the mid range isn't flat, then it's so much more difficult uh, for the top and bottom to strike a balance. So much so that even uh, like um, ICOM and their 7300, their 7610, they don't even put a mid range uh, EQ in there. Um, because it, they want it to be flat, so they just have a two band top and bottom, and it's very uh, simplistic uh, to strike an EQ balance. So hopefully, uh, when you uh, did away with that um, uh, that mid range uh, thing, it's it's w fairly flat the way the way you got rid of it, Roger. Right, that was the uh, the intention. KC9 DKV WA9 UIR. Yes, um, but I think I'm going to move the, uh, the the center frequency, the treble. Uh, boost up a little bit because right now it's kicking in below one kilohertz, which is way too low. I think over. Yes, sir. Yeah, you want that uh, up uh, to be of use to you. Uh, it would be 2.5, 2.6, but uh, you know, take it on up as far as it'll go, and let me hear it. Well, here again, I got to pull the soldering iron out to do that, so that's not going to happen today. Oh yes, sir. I mean, uh, you know, how far can you do it today? Well, it's fixed. All I can do is change uh, the amount of gain. Oh, I've got you. I got you. So you were talking about uh, as a as uh, something to do with a soldering iron tomorrow. I got you. Well, it sounds good. Uh, it's you know it's got plenty of uh, um, upper mids, uh, not a lot of uh, syllabic articulation, but a lot of upper mids. Uh, so you do have uh, pretty good articulation. Uh, we might uh, check out uh, a couple of clicks uh, boost on the bottom end to uh, uh, get you a little bit uh, more rounded on your EQ curve. Okay, I've run uh, the base all the way up to the pot limit, and uh, that's probably as good as I'm going to get for today. Over. Sounds pretty good. Why don't you give me about 10 seconds on uh, uh, the thing you like best about your radio, Roger? Well, no, the thing I like best about this radio is that it works. Considering it's just a bunch of circuit boards spread out on the bench with a bunch of cables hooking them up, and uh, a lot of uh, exposed electronics here. Over. Roger. Now I would pull your mic in down just a tad. What it, what is your mic in at the present moment? It's running pretty hot. Uh, can you back it off about uh, ten percent or five five percent, somewhere between there? Seven compromise seven percent. Okay, I'll try it again. Here's where I had it. This is uh, number five, and this is number uh, four, and this is number three. This is number 
Yeah, about four and a half, I think. About four and a half, Roger. Okay, he's back to four and a half. Does that sound better? Yeah, I would I would uh, split the difference here and call it even, Stephen. Uh, I think, uh, you know, we've got it going on. If you want to hear it, I'll have uh, this posted up on YouTube tomorrow. So if you go to YouTube and do a call letter search, KC9VKV, followed by the word logbook, that will take you uh, to this recording. It'll be uh, cut number one of uh, uh, 2020 uh, some odd QSO vlog recordings. Roger. Roger, Jim. I will step aside and let others... Uh Take advantage of your expertise. I appreciate the help. WA9UIR is clear. Roger, Rick. Uh, before you go, sir, uh, what would you, um, if you were going to name your radio, what would you name your radio? I have no idea. Sorry. Homebrew. Yeah, just call it homebrew. I'll do that, sir. Uh, I'll do that. I usually make it a habit of getting the the radio, you know, along with the uh, the, the location and the call sign and the guy's name, you know. So I, I've got homebrew for you. Roger, Roger. Roger, Roger. Thank you much, Jim. Yes, sir. 73. You have a great afternoon, beautiful weekend. This is uh, KC9VKV, the Friday afternoon QSO VLOGNET. If you have a radio you want to check out, give me a shout.